Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. Today I'm actually upstairs in my office where I do all my video editing. And the reason why is I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be talking about the Apple iPad. I know it's unusual and it's not really retro, but I thought this might be useful for people. So let's get right to it. So some of you may have noticed that I've been using this iPad uh, on my channel lately. It's a seventh generation iPad. Well, I don't I don't really know the iPad models, but it's a new model. I got it off Amazon. It was $250 on sale, 64 gigabytes. R nothing special to report about this thing. Now, I generally don't use Apple products. I prefer Android for my phone, for instance, but I didn't have any kind of tablet. And the reason why I wanted a tablet was actually just for looking at PDFs. Often I find I need to check out data sheets and quickly refer to things. And the thing about the iPad that makes it so good for this is it has a four by three aspect ratio or thereabouts, which lends itself much more closely to reading regular letter or A4 size papers. Now to that end, I found the iPad particularly useful for this exact purpose and it's pretty much all I use it for. I don't actually use this for reading my email or watching videos or anything like that. It stays downstairs on the build bench for use like this. Now taking a look at Apple's website, this is the specs for this particular iPad. I have the space gray version. Obviously, I'm sorry, I have a 32 gigabyte, not 64 gigs. This capacity doesn't really matter. I have the, just the Wi-Fi model, and like I mentioned, it was really cheap and on sale. 10.2 inch screen. This iPad has the fingerprint reader, which I prefer because the nice thing is if this thing sits on the table like this, I'm clearly way out of view, and yet I can still unlock it with my finger, and I don't have to tilt it up to point at my face. Now, something that Apple mentions that this particular iPad supports is the Apple Pencil first generation. The Pencil is Apple's wireless pen for annotating and drawing on the screen. What's interesting about the Pencil is Apple charges $100 for that device, and this iPad only cost me a total of 250. So the ratio of the pen cost to the tablet cost is so outrageous to me that there is no way I would ever think about buying this Apple Pencil. So while I was looking at AliExpress, I came across what looked like an Apple Pencil compatible device, like a clone per se, for the first generation Apple Pencils. And it looks like it works using the same technology as the Apple Pencil, but it costs a whole lot less. So fast forward a little while and it came, it arrived in the mail. And let me try to get the box where we can read it. It says pencil, super fine, nib, active capacitance. So one of the things I was worried about was a lot of these pens, I, don't, I haven't opened this up yet, but a lot of these pens just are capacitive touch. Like they 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 simulate your finger. So it, it doesn't work like the pencil work. The pencil, when you're drawing on the screen, if you have your hand resting on the glass, it doesn't register and it won't, you know, you can't draw lines all over the paper unless you're using the actual pen. I'm a little concerned that the box actually says active capacitance because does that mean that this is just like one of those cheap $2 pens that has a little rubber nub on it that emulates your finger? Let's take a look inside the box. We have some very fine little tips, obviously for the pen, little nubs or whatever you want to call these. There's a USB-C cable, so there is a battery inside of this little pen, I guess. So here is the actual pen itself, and I picked it up, and it might be a bit hard to see, but there's a blue light that came on right next to the charging jack there, and it's coming on again. And what? Okay, so right off the bat, I didn't have to do anything with the iPad. It's just seemingly working. Let's take a look at the listing on AliExpress for the pen that I bought. When I bought it, it was just slightly over $17 with free shipping. It's gone up a little bit since then. Took a few weeks to come in the mail. The description is hilarious. It says Apple Pencil 2 Touch Pen Stylus for iPad, iPad Pro, 11, 12, blah, 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 all this stuff. The funny thing is, is this is a clone of the Apple Pencil 1, not the 2. The 2 is the one that won't even work on this iPad. So why does it list that up here as Apple Pencil 2? I, I don't know. Now it does mention here that there's a gift of $50 genuine app after confirming receipt. So I have actually confirmed that I received this. I should contact them and see exactly what this means. Do I get these apps for free, like codes or something? Or do I just get to download the free versions, which really means nothing. Anyhow, scrolling down, it does say here, check your iPad model. 
This is designed only for the 6th gen iPad Air 3rd gen and some other iPads. Well, I know that the 6th and 7th gen iPad both work with the Apple Pencil 1. So even though it doesn't list the 7th generation iPad here, I figured that this probably worked perfectly for me. Scrolling down, here's where it gets into the feature set. And this is pretty hilarious. So palm rejection technology. Look at that big X over the palm. And this is the nice thing about actual Apple pencils on an iPad is that they do reject your palm because it's only gonna respond to the tip of the pen and not your fingers. The fingers will just scroll the document around as opposed to actually drawing on it. And yep, it goes on to say, no need for wearing gloves, precise line with no delays, palm rejection technology, 20 hours of playtime. They're trying to compare themselves to the original Apple Pencil 2, which isn't really comparable because this is supposed to be like the Pencil 1. But it's saying that the Apple Pencil tip is coarse and large, so part of the work could not be completed. But this has a fine one millimeter tip, suitable for any work demand. And second reason why this pen is better is the tip is replaceable and they give us five nibs, 10 years. That's nice, I guess. I don't know where they get this 10 years from. And the Apple Pencil nibs need to be purchased separately. And then they try to say that this tip is carbon fiber, which I find highly unlikely. I'm sure it's just a cheap piece of plastic, but they do say that the one millimeter tip is more fine. So you can draw more accurately compared to the Apple Pencil. Maybe that's True, I, I don't know, I don't really believe that, but I've never used an Apple Pencil, so I couldn't even say if this is true or not. So for number four, they're comparing it to the real Apple Pencil 2, the second generation pen, and that does only work on the iPad Pro, the second generations. I don't know, it's confusing. There's so many different models of iPads, but yeah, the Pencil 1, the, even the one that Apple sells, works on all of these iPads listed here, including the one that I have. Here's where they're saying it has stronger performance and lower price. Well, it does have a lower price, that's for sure. Type-C charging port, that's nice because the original Apple Pencil 1 had a lightning port you had to plug into the bottom of your iPad and it stuck out in a stupid way to charge. At least this you can charge in a normal way. Piano paint process, okay, yeah, it's pretty nice. One piece design, sure. But here is the biggest actual difference is the real Apple Pencil costs 99 bucks or the second generation one is $129 versus this thing, which they're saying is $21. Well, I got it for 17, so yeah, it's way cheaper. This part's pretty funny. Let child learn painting easily. And you scroll down and there's a kid here using the pen with his most grotesque screwed up hand. And it says, I dear, I dear. What, 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 what is this even trying to say? I don't know, it's so silly, but look at this kid's hand. This is horrible. And why would they think this is a good picture? Here they're talking about the battery life, one and a half hours of charging time, 20 hours of continuous use and 90 days of standby. So that's all pretty good if that's, holds true actually. Type-C charging port, like I mentioned, I love that, and an LED power indicator light. So of this cheap pen from AliExpress, there is a first generation version, and this is how it looks apparently. So it has an actual button on it, and then you pop the cap off, and I'm pretty sure it has a micro USB underneath. This is in contrast to the second generation, the one I just got, which has the touch button on the top, and the Type-C charging port, and the little light on the side. So make sure you opt for the one that you care about if you want, type C charging, then get this one. I assume it's better in other ways, but I don't really know. It doesn't say too much on the listing. All right, so I'm not really familiar with how to use an Apple Pencil on an iOS device, but I assume this Note app here probably is a good test. So let's see, is this? Okay, only draw with Apple Pencil. Your fingers are used for scrolling instead. You can change this later in the settings, okay. So the pencil's working. And yeah, sure enough, when I use my finger, it doesn't actually draw on the screen, but yet, oh wow, okay, so this does work. Okay, so some time has passed and I found this app called Paper, which I guess people use for drawing and whatnot. And the one thing I figured out is this pen is not pressure sensitive. So the real Apple Pencil, I'm sure, is pressure sensitive. This one, on the other hand, if I switch to something that's very fine like this pen, doesn't really matter how hard I push, it's just gonna draw, like this must be a colored pencil, I suppose. It always draws at exactly the same pressure. So if you're going to be looking for a pen that is pressure sensitive, this is not the one for you. Next, I found an app called PDF Expert, and I think this will allow me to use the pencil to annotate. So right now, if we look at the schematics here, it's just doing the selection, but if I pick one of these here, maybe I can now draw. Yeah, okay, so this so this absolutely works. I use my finger, it scrolls around, but yet the pen actually draws. 
So this will be really useful for me if I'm trying to explain, you know, how things connect up to pins, like that pin goes to there, and this chip goes over to there, and that's over here to that pin, I can do that. And it's nice, actually. Yeah, this is not bad. This app was free. It might be worth me spending a little extra money on a paid version. Oh, I can add adjust the thickness, which is good, since there's no pressure sensitivity on this pen. It's a little cl more clear now. Yeah, okay, this is, uh, this is really neat. All right, let's talk about a couple things. So it does include a little fake leather pen holder. So I, I guess that's nice. I mean, it, I don't know, it seems decent enough. It's not exactly easy to get the pen out of here. You have to kind of jam your fingers in. Now, next up, there are these little nibs for the pen. I, I don't know how to get this out. It didn't come with any instructions. Probably you just have to grip this with some tweezers or something and just pull straight out and then you can probably just push one of these in uh, The feel in the glass is pretty good. It's pretty smooth It's a lot smoother than I say a real pencil on paper would be so if you like that resistance kind of rubbery feeling This uh, this this tip here feels like hard plastic. So it just feels like slick hard plastic on the glass Therefore it slides very very easily the pen itself is pretty much smooth and round all the way around, except where the charging connector is, it has a flat portion on the pen. That means, of course, is if you put it down on something, it doesn't just immediately roll off. Like right now it's sliding, it's not actually rolling. Oh, look how it's actually launched something on, on the iPad. That's a bit funny. Feels a little heavy on one side, so it seems to kind of just come to a rest with the charging port up, the opposite side of the flat part. But hey, you know what? It works. Look, this is on the flat part and it's steady, it's not just gonna roll off my desk pretty easily. So that's nice. I heard a big complaint of the Apple original pencil was that it would just roll right off your table really easy, and of course it would break, and then you'd be out a hundred bucks. So I wanted to test charging the pen, so I've plugged it into a USB-C cable, just the one I use to charge my phone, and inside there, it's going to be hard to see, there is a little red light that comes on through that tiny hole. So I'll let this thing charge up and see how long it takes. So it's been about 20 minutes, and if you can make it out, the little LED is green inside there. But I actually have no idea how discharged the pen was, so I'm not sure if that was a full charge or that was something else. Now the box said to push the top button twice, but it seems like you just touch the top ever so slightly. You see the pen is on right now, and I touch it again, the light goes off, and it's off now. So it's not pressure sensitive and it's capacitive touch. So you just lightly touch it. So you need to make sure when this is in your bag that you don't accidentally touch the top of the pen. Otherwise I suppose that will turn on and the battery will run dry. So there's one more thing I wanna talk about before I end this video and it's the build quality. The pen feels really solid. I'm very surprised. I would have assumed this was be feeling cheap, light and generally crappy, but it feels really nice in hand, very solid. It is plastic but it feels like a very solidly built little pen. Now, would I recommend this $17 Apple Pencil compatible stylus? I actually totally would. If you don't need the pressure sensitivity for artistic purposes, then for just annotating PDFs, it does exactly what it set out to do. And that's exactly why I bought this thing. You can't beat the $17 price and it seems to work really well. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. If you liked this strange, unusual, not my normal type of video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you thought that I should never review things that aren't retro and you hated this video, you know what to do. You can hit that thumbs down button. Put your comments and your suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe for more videos. Hit that little bell icon there if you wanna be notified when I post them. I'll be posting videos on an unusual schedule. Now I used to post them every Saturday morning, but I'm probably gonna post them at just random times as I make them to keep more content flowing for everyone who's stuck at home. And that's gonna be it. So stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.